Next, we have um, Anisha Kumar, who's going to talk about her AK Academy chapter system. Anisha? Hi, Mr. Feiner. Thank you. Um, can I share my screen? I have a presentation. Sure. Thank you. All right, hi everyone. My name is Anisha Kumar and I'm a junior at Ardsley High School. And today I'll be talking to you about an initiative that I've um, launched through my nonprofit organization. So to begin with, I'd like to um, walk you through my journey to um, where I am now. So in seventh grade, I started a blog where I um, um, posted these various little clips of um, uh, different ways that students can um, learn different subjects. So I take a subject per week and I'd uh, kind of break it down um, to kind of offer like a fun way um, for, for students to learn different subjects. And um, starting in eighth grade, I started shifting this and focusing more on science um, because this is a, a subject that I'm passionate about and I wanted to um, zero in on it. And so I was looking for ways to um, explore science kind of innovatively and in a creative way. And so I started making these science experiment videos, which I posted on um, YouTube so that students can have a, um, a hands-on experience and a direct experience with the content that they're learning. Um, and then after I started doing this for a little while, I wanted to take it to the next step and provide a more interactive experience um, with um, in learning science. And so I, in 2018, I conducted a workshop at Greenberg Public Library in Concord Road Elementary School, um, where I did these science experiments with a group of students. Um, and then recently last year, I started, um, I converted my organization into a 501c3 nonprofit organization um, because I wanted to um, be able to serve students that, um, that don't have the resources to be able to uh, take advantage of these resources and really like um, be able to engage and uh, with their with their with their learning and be, get excited about it. Um, so my current mission is to be able to spread this yeah, love science love. and learning um, among students of all backgrounds. And um, in um, also in April of 2020, I conducted virtual workshops um, by Facebook Live, um, also with Mount Kisco Public Library and Greenberg Public Library to also provide these interactive experiences. And so my general goal with my nonprofit organization is to provide quality education outside the classroom so that students can um, explore and learn um, past what they're learning in the classroom, be able to delve deeper into it. Um, and the reason for, you know, the, as I see it, the need for this sort of um, educative experiences is that when students are really engaged in what they're learning, they take control of it. Um, they retain information better and they are in general more excited, which is very, very important in the learning process. And this also ties into the difference between intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation, where students that are intrinsically motivated Sorry, excuse me, intrinsically motivated who do things for um, um, for their own passion, for interests, um, they are more likely to delve deeper and um, truly engage with their content and take the, take their education a step further than those that are extrinsically motivated and motivated by things like, you know, praise and grades. And so um, the way I want to promote um, this intrinsic motivation is through like hands on experiences and in science, specifically science experiments. So the approach that I'm taking has two initiatives to it. The first one is the chapter system um, where high school students can start a uh, chapter system in their community where they hold science experiment workshops to spread um, these sort of experiences with students in their community and to spread a love of science while also building leaders with these high school students are taking um, charge and um, um, really making their um, community a better place while also um, providing the system for sustainability so that, um, that we have a widespread impact while also um, one that will last, last long. Um, and then our second part of it is the outreach um, part of it where um, we'll be looking to provide resources for um, resources like um, materials to do science experiments and equipment to um, be able to uh, um, 
interact with the content hands on um, in for underprivileged schools. And we'll do this both um, domestically by uh, targeting Title I schools and then also uh, internationally by uh, uh, trying to serve underserved international communities. And we're starting those initiatives in India at the moment. So um, I'm going to focus on the chapter system today, and um, this is an overview of the things, the different points that I'm going to touch on um, in this presentation. So the first thing I want to talk about is how a high school student can start a chapter in their community. So um, any high school students entering grades 9 to 12 in the fall can apply to become a chapter leader through a simple application process. Um, uh, it's a Google form. Um, and the link for that can be seen on the flyer. And also the link at the bottom um, is a page on our website where you can um, learn a little bit more about the chapter system. There's a frequently asked questions page and also the link to that Google form. And I wanna emphasize that for high school students to become a chapter leader, there's no specific exp uh, experience that they need to have. And they simply need to have a passion to um, for spreading um, an excitement for learning among other students. And the deadline for this application is August 1st of 2021. So after um, applications end on August 1st of 2021, um, we will be vetting those applications and selecting those um, chapter leaders. And um, after this, there will be a training process where I'll be, ab be able to communicate with them on how to um, build their chapter, how to um, conduct the workshops and um, what content that they um, should be covering and things like that, the requirements and the expectations. Um, and then the student will start building a club-like system and incorporating other students into their chapter. And then after this is done, um, the students will then plan workshops um, to conduct in their community. And to kind of explain what a workshop is like, I, I'm going to be talking about the most recent workshop that I conducted, which was in February, um, uh, February 15th to 19th during winter break. For five days, I conducted a workshop for two hours a day in a hybrid model. Um, and what we did in these workshops will kind of serve as a model, as a for, um, kind of the format that these other students will be doing in their communities as well. Um, so we started with like a science experiment. On the image on the right, you can see one of the experiments that we did, which we took um, red cabbage indicator and we put them into various substances and we saw, um, tested to see whether they were like acids or bases. And then we um, talked about how that experiment worked after that. And the wonderful thing about it is that we typically cover content that um, is not usually directly covered in the curriculum by the time those students are um, coming to the workshop. So for example, acids and bases are only really um, covered in depth in high school, but it's a, we explain it from such a fundamental level that um, these middle school and elementary school students are able to understand it. Um, we even had a third grader attend this workshop on acids and bases, and he really um, grasped the content and was, um, you know, able to do it in, in, in a very excited and um, he had a lot of fun. So then after we do these science experiments, um, we do other science or enrichment activities as well. So for example, um, we did, uh, we had a debate on cloning. So we read this case study about a specific situation in which cloning might be used. And there's like these other uh, perspectives that were presented and um, these students basically read through that and they um, took their own position. We, I put them in breakout rooms and they started discussing it amongst each other. Then we came back in a bigger breakout room and uh, a bigger group and we started talking about it um, as well. Um, another thing that we do is uh, view science as sort of historical perspective and learn about different scientists and um, their contributions as well. And this workshop acted um, as a fundraiser and we raised around $600 from that. Um, I also uh, compiled a, a video after this workshop um, with some of the pictures and testimonials from it. So I, I just wanna play that right now because to, to you know, give you an idea on what um, these workshops would be like. That's great. <laughs> doing all the experiments this past week. But I think my favorite one is doing the ice cream one today and um, understanding why it, how it worked and understanding the um, melting point, freezing point and boiling point. 
I knew some of it, but now I know way more than I knew before. This portion in which the actual phase change is occurring, um, the temperature is not changing. I think today my favorite experiment in the week was probably the um, log round. The, today's experiment, I really liked it because it was really cool what it did. And it was really cool, the oil and water they didn't mix, and I really liked that. I also enjoyed um, looking at the passage and learning about cloning and things like that. Yeah, I really enjoyed learning about like uh, cloning and genes and uh, looking at the timeline. And my favorite experiment this week was probably the flying tea bags yesterday, and the leveling lamp is like my next favorite experiment. <laughs> Like, I learned a lot, and I recognized my sister, and like, I learned a lot, and like, ions, and like, neutrons, and electrons, and protons, and... And what did you like about volunteering? Um, I liked helping out people, kind of getting to know everybody. And also learning things in the process. I feel like when you when you explain something to other people, it kind of imprints it in your mind, and you kind of. Um, I liked the Also like to like say my opinion and then also hear um, others' opinions about if um, cloning is morally right and ethically right and um, if we should use cloning. <laughs> that now I want to talk about the, um, the ways that different um, members and individuals um, are able to, um, to have a benefit from, from this chapter system. So um, one of the things is that the high school students that actually start um, the, the chapters in their community um, really have an, a, an opportunity to build a lot of skills. Um, one of them is leadership um, by starting this chapter system, by holding these workshops, there's a lot of leadership that's involved. Um, also public speaking is a huge part of it as well. Organizational skills um, in order to plan for these workshops and things like that. It, it, um, it's, it's truly a learning process. <laughs> and um, also uh, teaching and working with children. I think the wonderful thing about it is that it's not just that one student who's learning. Um, it's, it's like everybody together working together and building and growing off of each other, which I think is um, truly helpful and, and, and beneficial. And the other um, member, another group that's really benefiting from it is the students immediate community. So um, the students that um, attend the workshop are able to have this experience of, um, ex of seeing um, learning in a way that they may not have seen it, seen it before and really um, be able to dive deeper and um, become interested with their learning. So you can see some of the testimonials here as well. And then the next step of that is the um, reaching students and schools that um, otherwise don't have the resources to be able to del delve uh, deeper into their learning. And one of the ways you're doing that is that high school students in uh, Title I schools can also um, start the uh, chapter in their community, but they, their, theirs will be categorized as an outreach school, um, outreach chapter, so that um, the, their workshops won't act as fundraising workshops and um, they can even apply for funding from um, AK Academy so that they can gain access to those resources to conduct hands-on activities and um, in general improve student engagement as well. Um, so how can you help? Um, one of the things that would uh, greatly 
uh, help us would be donating uh, so that we can reach those underprivileged schools um, to be able to provide them with resources um, to be able to delve deeper. I did re uh, research in you know the main things that uh, Title I schools, um, the main issues that they face, and the main thing is a lack of resources because um, even there was one story where a teacher was able to get donations for um, books that are like popular, like currently, like in a Title I school, and um, this, their stu her students' engagement in their in in reading time during in, in their um, in the school greatly increased once they were able to get those books that those students really truly enjoyed. So um, being able to provide um, resources and um, opportunities to be able to do things that are engaging and fun uh, truly are uh, beneficial ways of of um, of improving education. And another thing um, would be spreading the word. I'm working on uh, reaching out to high schools, uh, high schools and um, other places for them to be able to spread the word about the chapter system. But if you know a high school student um, that you think you might be, might be interested in it, it would be um, greatly helpful for you to spread the word to them. Um, another thing would be to support us on social media. High school students that uh, are interested in applying can uh, follow us there to receive uh, update, updates and reminders. And um, parents who have younger children uh, might find our YouTube channel helpful. We have a bunch of science experiment videos um, on there. So thank you so much for your support and thank you so much for listening. And I'd be thank happy. Thank you. you. And good luck. And we're so lucky to have you and um, our community doing such great things and really appreciate everything. Uh, you do to help uh, to help others. Thank you. Thank you. Great, you're a real. You have a great future ahead of you. Thank you. Great.